Okay, we are back. Becky and I are here to escort you through the last few rounds of the day. Elimination rounds on tap. Let's go ahead and look at the brackets, see who advanced through. We saw some of the players on camera. We saw Jordan Litsky, certainly, with Mono White Hammer. Uh, he's going to be playing against Garrick Alford, playing Blue White Control. That is the Days Undoing version that we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. Ivan Espinosa with Four Color Blink. We know what his decks are always like. They're always registered as 10 rack. They are always four color. <sighs> uh, versus Chris Smith playing Golgari Yagmuth. Oh, all right. And that is, I, I guess, I would have ended with that if I had known, but that is the match we're going to be watching. Ivan versus Chris. We get Charles Eiler with Azorius Combo, which uh, is that Tamishi or is that just Blue Eye Control with Days and Dewey? Actually, I think that's what it is. Uh, versus Jesse Robkin. Not satisfied with uh, one finals of performance on the weekend, going for a second with the Is It Breach deck. And then Travis Brown, the other hammer player, versus Gabriel Ibadi with Grixis Tempo, which uh, that was, may have been, there was something special about Gabriel's deck also. I know we watched it earlier today, but it's been a long right. day and I don't remember what stood out about it, but there was something. Oh, it's the, I know, it's the Asmo deck. Yeah. Gabriel Ibadi is playing the Asmo deck. So that's yeah. interesting. And it's also worth mentioning that I think Charles Eiler is calling it Azorius combo, but is playing just the same. The combo is Narset Days Undoing. Right, right. Yeah, so it's so, like, so like, so we have two <clears throat> uh, blue-white control Days Undoing decks, two hammer decks, a breach, uh, a four, one, only one four color deck. No, I probably, I don't know, what what's more surprising? Chat, I'm interested in your opinions also. What's more surprising? No blue-red Murktide decks or only one four color deck because i feel like both of those question. things are somewhat unusual hmm i think right hmm. i think four color has been around enough that we're us only seeing one and that person being ivan espinoza who is mm -hmm. probably one of the better players with four color mm -hmm. i think we're starting to understand that like people are figuring out either how to play against four color or bringing decks that have good matchups against four color mm -hmm. and that's why we're seeing that fall off so i think that that one is less surprising to me now mm -hmm. okay so players are shuffling us we can go ahead and go to the table and see how things are gonna work through that we threw ivan espinosa we saw i believe we saw get a draw in the mirror a few rounds ago Mm -hmm. And already had a loss at that point. So one out and made it into the top eight. Placing Chris Smith on Golgari Yagmuth. So this is, I mean, we've seen the Yagmuth deck a few times. Uh, impresses normally uh, whenever Young Wolf is able, is relevant. Golgari Yagmuth looks great. Mm -hmm. If the Undying Creatures aren't able to do anything important, then the deck looks a little underpowered. Would you say it looks mopey? Uh, that word would be appropriate. It wasn't okay. obviously the word I chose, but yes, certainly. If I was trying to fit that word into the broadcast, that's where I would have done it. Okay, cool. Good to know. I'm All right. Kidding. So which one of these do you think is going to take it down? Let's make some predictions. I, Let's have some I, fun. Let's also throw your predictions in chat. Who do you think is going to win? Whether it is because you're just a fan of the player or bigger fans of which one of these decks. Yeah. So in chat, if you think Ivan's going to win, follow Nerd Rage Gaming. And if you think Chris Smith is going to win, Follow Nerd Rage Gaming. We'll figure out your votes later on. Uh, <laughs> personally, I would side with the four color deck. I, I would too. And I think okay. it's also going to be slightly skewed just because I think that if somebody is going to pilot this deck very well, I am kind of leaning in Ivan's favor. Okay. Well, we shall see. This is now top eight. Deck lists are open. Players were able to review each other's lists before the game started. And if you're just joining, just joining us and you're thinking it looks a little dark, well, it is a little darker than normal. This is a relic of the thunderstorm that knocked the power out of the building a couple hours ago as the lights did not come back to full capacity. So it's bright enough, so the game must continue. Yeah, I said when all of the power went out, I was like, the thing I want more than anything is a picture of everyone who simultaneously pulled their phones out and like propped them up with the flashlight feature on to start playing magic like that. And just a picture of a room full of people doing that because the power went out. Oh, well, okay. Dashing my hopes. It felt like forever on my end. 
All right. So just to explain why why Becky's hopes were dashed, it wasn't because you all didn't vote immediately. It's because we were informed <laughs> the power was only out for a couple seconds. But yeah. that's only enough to disrupt the room. It's it's enough for every single person in the room to go, oh, and yeah, then true. Back up. Yeah, because you know that's what happened. All right. Two lands for Ivan to open things up. Chris Smith, Wall of Roots. All right. That's fine. Produces a lot of mana, especially a discount on Court of Calling. And Ignimal Hierarch. Okay, two mana creatures. That's fine and everything. No pressure, though. So Ivan probably doesn't mind this too much. And we'll see if we get this wrong. So the Yagwenta, obviously, it requ requires his name set card in order to combo. Mm -hmm. It can win just through combat. However, that feels like it's going to be difficult here against a deck that's basically just stocked with removal and value cards like Ice Fang Quaddle here. With one basic snow or one snowland in place so far for Ivan, hoping to get towards three. So this actually can trade off with, well, actually, what am I talking about? A one power quaddle trades with almost everything in Chris's deck anyway. That's true. Only for it to come back a little bit stronger. Yes, indeed. So Graveyard Hate and Endurance may play an important role here. Also, I suppose if Ivan is able to tutor up an Emrakul and cast it, Christmas deck might be vulnerable to combo killing itself with Yagmuth just um, drawing cards over and over again mm -hmm. to eventually run out of life. Yeah, that's very true. Lots of shuffling as per usual for the modern format and especially this four color deck that has to be very careful about its mana and a run in six is going to be the swift end of that ignoble hierarch. Yes, it is. <clears throat> okay, so earlier today, there was a question that I forgot to address in the chat asking about if the winner of this event which is a qualifier for DreamHack Atlanta, is already qualified, does the invitation pass down? The answer is no, it does not. Oh. That was a ruling that was made for all events like this, the Nuridge events, Star City events, any, any apparently, well, at least those two, but open uh, entry events. Uh, there's a term for them, I believe, that escapes me now that refers to events that there are qualifiers, but if you're already qualified, you're still allowed to play in because they're destination events. Ooh, Becky's on top of it for destination events. They are not going to push down. So if the winner of this is already qualified, second place will not pick up the invite. Uh, so whoever, whoever asked that question three hours ago, if you're still here, there's your answer. <laughs> if you're still here and you didn't leave when the power went out, <laughs> there's your answer. <laughs> All right, here's a Grist. That's an excellent card for Chris Smith in most scenarios. Here, we're probably just making a, to a token. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Mills of Birds of Paradise, which is convenient because I doubt he wants that right now. Yeah, that always feels good to get rid of a card that you maybe weren't the most interested in keeping. And going right back to Ivan. Renin Six and Ice Fang Quaddle in play. If we can... Uh... I guess we're two snow basics away from this quaddle being a little bit more potent. So that's a bit unfortunate. And we're going to start by ooh, ticking down to do one to Grist and then swing another one with the Ice Fang Quaddle, putting it to hmm. two. Notably stops Grist from being able to tick down. Yeah. And oh, there's the rest. Oh, I'm okay. Finishes it off. Okay. So Ivan just finds, you know what? This is going to require a little bit of damage, a little bit of resources here but it's worth it to get this Grist off the table and stop this flood of random tokens, which actually are going to be a nuisance. Uh, wow. <gasps> we actually put a poll in the chat for who we think is going to win. Thank you, production. And it looks like 76% of people think that Yogmoth is going to win. Really? Do you think they actually think that, or they're just trying to disagree with us? They're trying to disagree with us, or we got a lot of Chris Smith fans in the mm, house. That could be true as well. So, it looks like the doors are open for this token to come across and pick off run in six, but well, Stringer Wookiees is going to make it much more likely as two attackers 
uh, second quad is not going to be able to stop both of them. Uh, and yes, uh, in answer to that question, players were giving each other's deck lists to review before top eight began. So there are no secrets left in the deck list. And then really that seems unfair because Chris Smith just has to do more reading because there's more That's, cards. In there's more card. uh, we're also in untimed. So I think we're still pretty safe for both of these players. Also, I want to highlight because the lighting is worse, the like ominous shadows that are going over the battlefield. Like oh, this is feeling very, it's feeling more epic. Mm, sure. Okay. So Koala does come down there and save the run at six and both creatures were, the creatures presumably were attacking one at, Ivan won at red and six. Alternatively, Ivan is at 12. Maybe they're both going at Ivan. Mm. But that seems aggressive. Yeah. Uh, another question. Yes. So, I mean, yes, you can double qualify for the DreamHack events. Um, because the destination events. Thank you, Becky. Mm-hmm are not designed only as qualifiers there's other reasons other incentives to play them it's not like the local rcqs where really you're you only play them to qualify and so there's no um i, well, I don't really want to discuss the reasoning because i don't know what it was but you are not allowed to play double qualify in local events like that all right i'm nothing to play here for ivan enough of questions regarding that i shouldn't open my mouth in the first place because that's all we're talking about <laughs> i'm nothing to play missy reinforced at the ready just Omnath things. And yeah, let's uh, let's cause for a little bit of a pause here with this Misty Rainforest sacrifice on the stack. What do we got here? Dismember? What could we do to take out this Omnath here? Grasp of Darkness and Modern. I have deck lists. I know that that's not what's going to be the case, but... I was going to be surprised if it was, let me tell you. <laughs> Uh, question about the top eight archetypes. All right, let's see if we can get this right. There are two blue eye control with days undoing. Mm -hmm. There are two hammer decks. I think there so. Yes. Is Golgari Yogmoth. There is full curler blink. There is Grixis Asmo. Mm -hmm. And is it leaves... good job. I definitely was not going to remember that. Jesse Robkin. How could I forget? Jesse Robkin is in with is it breach. Uh, I'm not sure what is going on right now. Oh. Okay. okay. So judges have paused the match. It's unclear to us why, but uh, they're going to fix that up. In the meantime, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the leaderboard and see where the players are at. We know Jesse Robkins in the running. We know Zoe Riederman had a big finish as well as a teammate of Jesse Robkins this morning to vault up the leaderboard. So here's the season two standings. This will lock up after next month's event. See Zach Allen up top there with 37 points. He was there this weekend. Uh, Jesse Robkin, who got to the finals uh, in the team event, that is going to be, I believe that's worth uh, 30 or so points. So that might be enough to put Jesse Robkin up top. Um Barring other people, probably got to be a whole lot, but I know Scott Polera, I believe, is in this top right. eight as well. Yes. So, but Jesse is also in this top eight. So, mm -hmm. if we were ever concerned, I think two top eights probably shoots Jesse up there pretty highly. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the overall leaderboard while we have another moment here as the players are going to go back to shuffling because a game loss has just been issued. We'll get to that in a moment. Meanwhile, you can see here Zach Allen also on top of the 2022 year-long leaderboard, which will be um, if he if he qualifies on the season two list, then his uh, overall leaderboard he will orange out just like everyone else. And Zoe Riederman would then be on top. She might be on top anyway at this point after making the finals this morning. You see Jesse Robkin down there in ninth. So that team really putting up strong finishes uh, both throughout the year and this weekend. All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, if the players are shuffling, go there. Otherwise, we can just come back to the booth and explain what just happened. Uh, Chris Smith has been issued a game loss, apparently, for presenting 59 cards in game number one. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, it is, in fact, weird and different from 
callings that I've had, but I trust the judge staff that's there. Yeah. So that may have to do with the fact that you, uh, you're not allowed to have more than 15 cards in your sideboard. And if he presented 59, then they must have 16 there. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of this exact ruling. I know sometimes there is leeway based on certain things that can happen. Uh, I believe there is for, there's more forgiveness if you accidentally have a cyborg card. If you actually have, if you forget the D cyborg, there's perhaps some forgiveness. But actually presenting too few, apparently in this case, whatever the exact ruling was, it was a game loss. I do have a fun story about this interaction in my life, actually, but uh, it may be too long for our All situation. Right, well, oh, okay. Short version? Okay, short version. I'm in a PPTQ. I'm playing against a teammate at the time, and we're we're playing a Is It Phoenix Mirror in Standard? And uh, the judge takes both of our uh, sideboards away, and I had accidentally presented 59 cards, and I get told by the judge that it's game loss. Two people around at the time say, wait a minute, that's not right, because obviously like wasn't purposeful. The card that was missing from my deck was one that I definitely want in there. Um, and then I basically sit there, wait a while. My opponent shuffles everything up and then all of a sudden we get told by the judge, oh yeah, that is wrong. We should try to reconstruct the board state. Oh, and, um, <laughs> uh, my opponent goes, that's not possible. I shuffled everything in. I want my free win pretty much anyway. Uh, so <laughs> I basically get told that I, since the board state can be reconstructed and because the judge had if like pretty officially issued the game loss. You lose anyway? I lost anyway. And then wow. game two. this was like more than halfway through the first game too, where I was pretty slated to win the first one. All right. So well, that's was ugly. certainly rough, but All I, right. I mean, again, there are certain times where that is something that is game lossable. And there are certain times where that is not game lossable. And it, I trust the judge staff that is there, that they would make the correct call. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so let's go ahead and look at the player's deck list while we have a moment. They are sideboarding for game two right now. Let's in particular look at Chris Smith's deck, deck as we haven't seen him on camera yet uh, this weekend. So here you can see the Golgari Yogmoth deck. Uh, a suite of mana producers, undying creatures, Yogmoth, obviously. And then a couple singletons that are effectively tutor targets that allow the wins, uh, Blood Artist and Giralf's Messenger. And then when you, you know, every good deck needs some removal. So four copies yeah. of Grist, the Hunger Tide. No copies of Grasp of Darkness. Shocking. <laughs> and let's take a look at sideboard, see what would likely be coming in. At, do you think that Megas of the Moon looks pretty spicy? I think I like it. Yeah. Now this is something with open deck lists. Ivan's going to know it's there. And there are abundant growths and some basics to fetch out. But still, it's possible that, that plays a role. Uh, we do have a couple discard spells, maybe Endurance, mm -hmm. maybe Turok. Uh, I don't just like Turok. It's protection from white actually plays a pretty big role sometimes. Yeah. No, I'm a pretty big fan of Turok as well. And Scavenging Who's... Well, let's take a look at Ivan's deck real quick. It's a Elder Army's Call version, I believe. Scavenging Who's would be more effective against the Traverse version. Although it's not like any creature against these four color decks lives more than 10 seconds anyway. Very true, very true. And to go into Ivan Espinosa's deck, I mean, these are pretty close to what we see a lot of the time, except for, as you mentioned earlier, Ivan is still playing Risen Reef, which I believe is kind of different. I believe for a while Ivan was not playing Risen Reef and now mm -hmm. has gone back to playing Risen Reef, um, as well as going into the new kind of tech of these Oath of Nissa's, some Abundant Growths, and is actually still playing Eladomri's Call, even though a lot of people are moving on to uh, Uvenwald. Yeah. Yeah, Ivan actually at one point was playing Ragavan actually for a while in the four color deck just to try and force players to respect uh, creatures, even though it was really the only early pressure that was there. But yeah, you're right. Risen Reef has replaced that at least in this build for now. Uh, if we have, if the players aren't ready to go yet, yeah, yeah, here's Ivan Cyborg. I, nope, sorry, this is Christmas Cyborg again. There we go. So you can see what he's access to, and of course. Why wouldn't a four-color control deck have Magus of the Moon in the sideboard as well? It so. just depends on it. Like, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and defend myself and why I think that it is something that you would bring in, at least for the second game, mm -hmm. is because if I'm playing against a Golgari... Okay, well, I guess this doesn't work anymore because we get to see sideboards. But if I'm playing against a Golgari Yogmoth deck, 
I would never expect them to whip out Omegas in the moon. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely not be searching for basics as a result of it. Like, first off, I'm not bringing in my Omegas in the moon in the sideboard. So on the off chance that you're playing in that matchup and deck lists aren't open, mm -hmm. I would do it at least in game two as a potential little gotcha. Right. Okay, so the players are shuffling up, taking mulligans. Let's go ahead and go back to the table. Uh, chat comments, ephemerates in the sideboard is a little odd. I agree there. And we have Ivan on six cards, and you see Chris Smith there with the smiley face, shrugging off his uh, game loss there, keeping it seven. You made a and little yeah, happy face for us, too. Thank you. It does seem oh, odd. Both of them did. Poured <laughs> in Magus the Moon against an opponent who himself is playing Magus the Moon. That is rarely something that's going to be viewed as a correct decision. However, if it's only in specific scenarios, Ivan's the intent of, of the Magus might be just not to mana screw a multicolor deck, but just to cripple something like Primeval Titan, Valakut. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could still, like you're saying, maybe you could catch your opponent unawares. All right. A little bit of a quicker start that is immediately shut down mm -hmm. for Chris in a young wolf that gets prismatically ended. Okay. Same turn two as last game. The young wolf was a change, but Chris is in identical position. And Ivan handled this last game with, I believe, a running six that shot down the Ignoble Hierarch. If he's got that once again, that would be a pretty clean only, way to recover from the early after volume. a nice Fink Waddle. Oh, right. In fact, it's an abundant growth. So two lands now that are functional, very functional, with uh, Magus the Moon in play. So Ivan Ooh. already setting up. But do in we not case... have a third land? Ooh. Actually, well, was that? I think that was the second turn. Oh, oh, you're correct. Chris is on the play. My bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just confused as how there was a well of roots and ignoble. No, that makes sense. We're following. Ooh. Okay, fetch dried arbor. And this is a cord for three. Here's a grist. This is an impressive allotment of stuff for turn three of a game. Uh, Chris, I believe, did he forget to actually take out his... Oh, no, he fetched dark right armor. I forgot. Mm -hmm. It's up top there. Yeah, coming together quite nicely, and especially this ignoble hierarchy getting to live. So there we go. Insect on the way. Is it first to 10 permanents? Is that how we determine the winner? Uh, Christmas got seven. Although, I've been having four on turn two. I, yeah, also I was going to say. Quite a bit. <laughs> it is a lot of permanents in play for both of these players. I believe we're now back to Ivan's turn. We have two lands tap for any color. Very much any color. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So maybe my joke about not having three lands was not, in fact, uh, I mean, it was too early, but potentially not misplaced. Right. It's hard to imagine that that was a play that Ivan would make if he had another land in hand. So maybe Chris Smith's very quick start here is going to get a chance to actually put a hurting on Ivan. So far, it definitely looks that way. Oh, there is a land. Oh, we did big at a land. Okay. Well, maybe it came off the second abundant growth. If so, uh, wipe the sweat off your brow. It looks like there is an expressive iteration in hand that maybe we're just trying to decide if we do that or something else. If we can, if we have the time to expressively iterate, or if we simply need to make sure that we're not taking too much damage. Chris asks for the lands to be spread out so it's clear what is what or where things are. Okay. Femorate pitching. I'm sorry. Fury pitching expressive iteration. 
takes down Grist. Ephemerate would have been ultra nice there, but that's still pretty good. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't believe a breeding... Oh, well, I guess we have the Hollowed Fountain that can tap for any color, so we would have been able to Ephemerate for sure. All right, so Chris, uh, not a whole lot of attackers, despite all these permanents that he started with and getting that Chris out there, can only attack for two this turn. Yeah, that is a little unfortunate, but I mean, hoping that only the three things in Ivan's hand are good enough to keep this train rolling. And we've got three in hand for Chris as well, though. So, I would be worried if uh, something hasn't just like started to happen this turn already for Chris, that maybe this hand is not ideal. That Blooming Marsh does come in tapped because of the Dryad Arbor being the third land. Mm -hmm. That feels like one that would be easy to forget with the Dryad Arbor in a different row mm -hmm. of the creatures, which is the way it's supposed to be positioned. But I'm just saying, like, I looked at the board, I came into Plata play tapped, and I had to think for a second as to why that was happening. Mm -hmm. And Eladomri's Call going to be the end step play for Ivan here, who's searching up for a Solitude. All right, Solitude, Omnath in hand. And no attack. Uh, that would represent... There's there's no reason not to attack. So that would... Um, no, no reason to have fear of what Ivan's going to do. So that would suggest, I'm sure to Ivan as well, that Court of Calling is in Chris's hand. Mm -hmm. And he wants the... It, there it is. So this is 4-7, which is the amount required to get Yagmoth. Three land, three additional creatures, plus the Wall of Roots mana. And there we go. Or there is at least the likely um, target, Yagmoth Thran Physician, which is a phenomenally strong card in this deck, especially combined with Undying Creatures, of which there aren't currently any. And there Ooh. that goes. Ivan, aware enough to be fearful of what Yawgmoth can do, is going to dispatch it immediately before Chris untaps. And it looks like in response to it, we're going to go ahead and activate a few times, sacrifice that insect. All right, uh, chat questioning whether Ivan has priority to cast that. He most certainly does. So what would happen there is Ivan passed at the end of turn. Chris Smith responded with Cord for Yogmoth, which anytime you are passing the end of a turn and then the other player effectively interrupts that, then the phase resets Ivan once again without the ability to pass and instead chose to play the Solitude. And now the sports ticket is looking really rough for Chris, barring something nice in hand. But I believe we're already through three copies of Court of Calling as well from Chris's deck. All right. Again, not much of a potential attack here. Still two. But a couple cards drawn last turn there. Okay, Wall of Roots. I mean, that's great and everything but chris's draw certainly would have been well, more well suited to dealing with an aggressive deck although that may be true of just the entire deck as a whole yeah fetch coming through but with two mana two cards in hand i have a hard time thinking about what chris could do exactly this turn aside from i don't know third or fourth court of calling somehow um, in hand. Yeah, Eldritch evolution here. Okay, that is sure. in fact what we have. So evolution wipes out the wall. And let's see, we're we gonna get another Yogmoth. We are. I mean, that is generally what this deck tutors for. It's just as scary that we keep going for this Yogmoth when we don't have Ooh. oh, never mind. My concern is fine. All right. Well, that certainly uh Chris is now with empty handed. <clears throat> empty handed but... if we make it through this turn, we're 
kind of looking pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Here's an Omnath for Ivan. I believe that Dried Arbor did just attack for two damage. Uh, unless that was required to cast a Young Wolf. I lost track of the mana that was available. Yeah, and I the think... life total hasn't changed yet. I think the Noble was used to oh, uh, cast the Young Wolf, so I think we're all good. Okay. Uh, maybe right. we needed the Dryad Arbor to cast Young Wolf. All right, here we go. So, Yogmoth activation number one. Young Wolf sacrifices Undying's back and puts a counter on Yogmoth. Um, um, Omnath. On Omnath. You are <laughs> correct again. To be fair, Yogmoth, Omnath, uh, similar last half of their name sounds, so. Sort of. <laughs> we'll just call excuse. one Yog and one Om. Okay, great. That'll make things simpler. Then anyone who shows up in the chat middleway through this match will be like, what are they talking about? All right. <clears throat> Horizon land sacrifice there for Chris Smith and an attack incoming, uh, which is something Yagmoth is certainly going to disrupt things. We've got this is actually a 3 3 young wolf because of the undying counter and because of ignoble hierarch. So does Yagmoth want, or I'm sorry, does Omnath want the block here? Almost certainly not. And continuing to just be able to get in here. All right. We sacrificing this Dryad Arbor and Ivan is responding. Mm -hmm. Ivan might be responding just to gain life here with Omnath. Okay, Ivan's my left level was 13, which is so the Dryad Arbor did attack last turn. That all checks out now he's going to gain effectively three and go up to 16 there's just so much priority passing not only for both of these decks but both of these players are using priority passes in a very like exact way all right so <clears throat> dried arbor pulled the counter off young wolf which drew a card. Young Wolf then, I believe post-combat, sacrifices to put another counter on Omnath, resetting itself. And let's not forget that Yogmoth also has a secondary ability where it can proliferate by discarding a card and paying two black mana, which can also increase the counters. Even without the full combo uh, in play here, which uh, Chris Smith obviously does not mm -hmm. have, the interactions with Yogmoth on in any or more amount of undying creatures do allow just a setup of an overwhelming uh, hand size advantage that can be used later in the game if he's unable to dig for the win this turn. And you can see here he's going to have used dice to indicate floating mana here as more cards are being drawn. Yogmoth. Yogmoth takes another counter of Omnath with the Young Wolf. On each one of these will cost Chris Smith a life point at this point. Something he's surely willing to pay. Ignoble Hierarch onto the board. Oh, okay. Thoughts used to the last two cards in wow. Ivan's hand that are both fetch lands, I believe. Yeah, so things not looking very good for Ivan Espinosa. We may be looking at a game three here. Chris Smith's like, yeah, you take away a game from me due to my own potential mistakes on presenting my deck. I'm going to win it right back. All right. Ignoble Hierarch will be a sacrifice as well. Mm -hmm. it's like, it's just like wow. a, a machine gun here. It's a Gatling gun. You're <laughs> taking down the Omnath one piece at a time. And now, yeah, I am with two land in hand, like we just saw. And Chris Smith, uh, with a full hand. Here's a wall of roots. Here's a strangler guys, another undying creature. That's a big part of being able to continue on here. And does pass the turn, but re basically replaced everything he had, killed Ivan's Omneth while increasing his hand size at the same time. Uh, a turn to be very proud of. Ivan, do you have anything at all? I mean, I we know the chances of it are kind of low here. Yeah, I believe he drew a solitude, actually. No, oh. maybe not. 
To be fair, everything looks shiny in Ivan's deck, so it's a little bit more yeah. difficult to tell. All right. Finally, a slightly more respectable attack here. First strong root dice is going to grow itself. By sacrificing to Yogmoth. I mean, even if it is a solitude, like when is the best time to solitude Yogmoth? Well That's kind of hard, earlier yeah. In the game, earlier in the game, it was obviously Ivan decided it was immediately, but now it might be when I can block yeah even though okay it's not guaranteed this will actually be maybe not likely this will actually be allowed to block but it is on the way in here at this point all right and it looks like we're going to quickly throw more things to the slaughter here to try and keep yeah as you mentioned solitude from blocking yep and this is a proliferate and going to grow the undying creatures. So this attack actually became quite sizable. Wow. Something is on the way out okay. here from the solitude, which looks like it's taking out the Yogmoth. That makes sense. Christmas down to five. Uh, although unlikely Ivan can punish that and a little bit of life being gained here and a pretty sizable attack all of a sudden. I will say that Chris Smith uh, does seem adept at maneuvering his way through this deck. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of uncertainty on his sacrifices and activations here he seems to know what he's doing i'm inclined to agree and i think that ivan very much is of the same caliber it just mm -hmm. this one a uh, little bit flooded out in this game in particular right. yeah but chris has definitely not made it easy for ivan to be able to have any amount of wiggle room and that is certainly applause worthy All right, Unholy Heat takes out Grist, but I've been now facing down a pretty sizable attack with a rapidly diminishing life total. Looks like an attack for eight at present. Oh, do we have another Yogmoth in hand? Yep. Not shocking wow. there. There are two, there were two copies remaining in the deck, and Chris Smith has drawn a fair number of cards over the last few turns. Very true. It's definitely another Grist in hand. I'm not sure that playing committing more stuff to the board, unless it's just trying to root heist, or he's going to try and dig for one, is going to actually increase the clock any. Yogmoth itself is not going to push any more damage through this. No, I take that back. Yogmoth and Proliferate would actually push the damage through this turn in fact it would push it up to 10 which is yeah. what levin's life total is mm -hmm. yeah question about some wording mm -hmm. on the card it seemed from chris smith's hand i'm just trying to decide exactly how we're navigating through potentially trying to win on this turn and maybe call ivan's bluff here well i believe do we does chris smith know ivan's card there were two lands on the thought seas then the ephemerite was drawn. Then the unholy heat. So I'm not even. Oh, oh, yeah. We sure might just know that Ivan's hand is a mystery. Yeah, it is the yep. land, and here is ten, and that will do it. So we'll go to game three. Chris Smith looking to pick up another energy win. Actually, both players trying to pick up another energy win. Chris Smith having won a modern event previously, and Ivan having won the championship last year. Yep. Yeah, some people in chat were mentioning that this is likely a little bit of a rematch, though I don't know if these players played the same decks or if this is exactly the same list that they're playing either. Based on mm -hmm. how often I think I've seen Ivan's change, I would be inclined to believe that that is not quite the case. Right. But certainly a lot, a very much similar. I mean, there may be, I, I mentioned before, the rag events that used to be in the deck obviously aren't there now. Whereas the Golgari Yogmoth deck, uh, I'm not sure how much that deck has changed recently i don't feel like we're seeing it, it also many... feels like a kind of difficult deck to change because it does mm -hmm. need like a certain number of pieces to enable and go into it 
Yeah, I mean, certainly some of the cyborg, some of the one of creatures that you're tutoring for could be dependent on changes in the metagame, things like that. But yeah, mm-hmm. overall, it's a pretty consistent list. Players are going to revisit their cyborgs. All right, sorry, the deck list, see what's going on. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess we can do that also. Sure. Let's take a look. So I have a Spinoza's four color blink here. We can see now having watched one cyborg game, do we have any difference of opinions on what may actually matter? Um, love not, yeah. the options here. Yeah, I was kind of just feeling that same way. And I also don't have great insight onto why some of these things are in the sideboard for Ivan. Like I'm looking at this meddling mage and I'm like, I mean, it seems like just like a useful card, especially if you're already playing on the Domri's call, Mm -hmm. then you're just very interested in some of these, again, like kind of toolboxy creatures in that, in the Night of Autumn, the Magus. Um, But it is interesting to see and be like, uh, can you really name anything like actually useful or are you just like kind of getting wrecked by the fact that you're playing against a quarter calling and eldritch evolution deck at the yeah. same time no i i think the mailing mage is going to be more for specific decks where you can name mm-hmm. something that actually locks things down that's not gonna be the case here fluster storm maybe i mean if ivan has cards he wants to cut i mean you use it to stop court of calling eldritch evolution that's iffy maybe but yeah, yeah this is super exciting all right players are drawing opening hands let's go ahead and get back to the table see who's going to make it through to the top four ivan was on the mulligan last game Flooded on abundant growth, didn't get things really rolling. Flooded on abundant growths into more lands. Yeah. Namely. All right, Chris Smith is going to take a mulligan. Do feel like that is likely the more mulligan oriented deck as a whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's also it's looking for specific things where I was just looking for lands, spells. I mean his his spells are not necessarily interchangeable, but they're all of so many of them generate some card advantage. I mean I guess there's only a few things like running six would be ideal as it is able not does it fix not only does it fix your mana, it actually the one damage shot actually matters here killing a multitude of Christmas creatures, especially with Ivan going first. That actually play, play a pretty significant role on, on how these games develop. Mm-hmm. Play draw uh, and Ren 6's ability to shoot down mana creatures. Yep. No, I mean, Ren and 6 is just such a potent card that, yeah, anytime you're trying to play an elf or a bird, it just starts to all kind of go downhill. You're really hoping the Wall of Roots is just really going to hold it down for you here. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's possible Chris Smith boards out some of his one mana single mana creature uh, mana creatures on going second in this matchup. I don't necessarily know that that's very likely. Is there are still good even later in the game off of mm-hmm. firing up Court of Calling or just off of Yogmoth? Yeah, and I think it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's rough if it happens, but you just got to hope that it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Oath of Nyssa finds Ice Fang Quaddle, and now any two land will cast Red and Six for Ivan. Doesn't necessarily need to have a red and a green. And speaking of a one mana mana creature, here we are with Ignoble Hierarch. So let's see, is turn two really just going to be Ice Fang Quaddle again, or do we have a run and six? There is a run and six in hand. Ooh, well, that's quite a beating, and I'll give Ivan a solid advantage to start the game here. If Chris has a Strangle Root Geist, that can at least prevent Ivan from picking up any additional value from the run and six, aside from the Ignoble Hierarch. Then it's just a one for one. That's really the best you can hope for on a Planeswalker activation like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, find yeah. them the exact decks, land that we want. <laughs> the what? decks are so big. I mean, you take a big handful of decks, search through it, the land you want's not even in that whole handful. You have to go back for more. Jeez. And there is Strang Ruru, guys. Okay. Oh. No, Chris is not going to fall too far behind here. Okay. Not too, all things considered, not, not the worst. Yeah. No 
Fury or Solitude to even stop that from happening. Would you do that to put I would do that to protect the Ren and Six, but maybe I'm wrong to do that. The Solitude on the Shangri Geist? Um It's probably arguable that you might, depending on your hand size. Mm -hmm. Fury doesn't have flash, but Solitude certainly does. All right, abundant growth on the snow covered island. drawing and deciding exactly what we're going to be gathering here. Looks like we have another fetch in hand, so should be pretty safe to have all the colors that we could possibly need. Mm -hmm. Actually, it looks like Ivan's hand, once again, is quite a few lands. Yeah, I thought that would look, look that way as well. So maybe didn't mind too much losing the Ren 6, but yeah, it looks like there's a lot of fetch lands in there. Prismatic ending takes down Strangler, guys. Okay, I mean, that's nice especially an undying creature but it did kind of it did what chris smith needed it to do which yeah, was take down the ren six yeah make sure that ren and six doesn't shoot our birds and our hierarchs is uh definitely action number one all right so chris smith looking for i mean a number of things here would be nice i believe there's another strangle guys in hand that's not a bad option but really we'd like to get something more substantial on the board here nothing is the place so maybe an endurance or maybe just actually nothing to do well, that seems a little spooky if that's the case but mm -hmm. looks like ivan is just going to be able to expressive iteration yeah i mean not a bad thing to have as your uh, first play for turn no absolutely not if christmas going to give ivan time to to just build up his bo his card advantage. I mean, I'm sure I was going to take advantage of it. So we see here, Iteration finds Wooded Foothills. And there is an Endurance. Which does make sense. Christmas is unlikely to have nothing. Mm -hmm. And Ivan's graveyard will go back to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, make sure you shuffle it up good in case we draw the next 65 cards and then get back to that part. That'd be random. It's important stuff. <laughs> That's something that like, I understand the impetus to make, you know, in the last, I don't know, handful of years to make cards that put things on the bottom, randomize it. But casting things like shimmer of possibility over and over again, and having to shuffle up the three card, the three other cards and put mm. them on the bottom. That's, it feels a little silly, even though I understand why it's the way it is. Yeah. I am in agreement. All right. Five damage across here for Chris Smith. I mean, Ivan drops to 11, now 10, unless he's got Quaddle. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. his call here. Okay. Okay. And what are we, Eladomri's calling for an Omnath to get some life back? Yep. Cool. That seems I to mean, be... uh, among the few things that Omnath does, of course. Right. Seems to be a prime choice, Omnath. Especially when you're going into your fifth land drop next turn. Solitude, I guess, would have been a reasonable option as well. But yeah, um, I mean, Omnath's ability to just, well, replace itself and then pad it your life total, all. generate mana, potentially drain your opponent's planeswalkers outside of combat. It's just awesome. Oh, and we had we drew one too. <laughs> just in case this first one doesn't uh, maybe go according to plan, let's mm -hmm. start it off. We knew we have an abundance of fetch lands as well. So let's just uh, get this ball rolling. Go to 14, make sure that we're a little bit more safe. We could even... I mean, depending on what's an and, maybe we're just holding this fetch land to... Okay, we're not holding the fetch land, never mind. I was like, maybe we hold it for the second Omnath, assuming that this one is going to die and then be able to double fetch in a turn to be able to shoot something. Maybe this is the second Omnath. Maybe Ivan's going to oh. generate Maddie here and just let you rule himself. I would be very much shocked <laughs> if that happened, but you never know. It does make the correct mana. Rogren Triumph going to be the pick off of that flooded strand. So we have one of those Triumphs in play as well. All right. Quaddle, still a white red floating. Wow. What a turn. Whoa. All right. Maybe uh, there weren't a bunch of lands in Ivan's hand like we thought. There was white. definitely the flooded strand, but uh, certainly a bit more gas in the tank than we initially thought. 
Well, those cards could just all come off the top. We don't know. That's fair. There could still be a bunch of lands in there, but yeah, that turn was excellent for Ivan Espinosa. And Chris Smith rebuilds with another Strangle, Rootgeist, and Young Wolf. So Undying Creatures ready to go, waiting for Yogmoth. This Yogmoth deck can fight through a lot if it's able to do its thing, but is Ivan going to be able to prevent that? Is Chris even going to be able to assemble it? Uh, more mana is required. Only having three for Chris Smith. Yeah. Did not make the fourth land drop. And only two cards in hand definitely makes mm -hmm. me concerned about the hoops that Chris would certainly have to jump through to make that happen. And especially considering the board state that Ivan currently has alongside the, what, five cards in hand, it looks like? Oh. Definitely concerned for Chris right now. All right. Ivan gains four life. Omnath attacks a luxury that Ivan has because the, he has a replacement in hand. Mm -hmm. A replacement and because this Omnath has gained us eight life. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris deciding. I mean, these blocks are seemingly free with the Undying Creatures, at least one of them. He's actually going to double block to try and take down the Omnath. Vulnerable to removal here, uh, which we know that Ivan may not even bother casting even if he had it. But a sensible block for Chris Smith, probably losing. I mean, what do you even kill if you're Ivan here? You kill the Endurance or the Young Wolf, which, I mean, killing young, putting a counter on the Young Wolf isn't very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like the lights tried to pick back up there for a moment and then yeah. went back again. As long as they stay on triple block. Hmm. Interesting. So that's, huh. this is, this feels bad for Chris Smith as he's, he wants to be able to kill the Omnath pretty badly here. And it's just not going to work. Dress down for Ivan Espinosa is going to be pretty nice as well as both undying creatures are going to die and not ing so just endurance will be left <laughs> I, I followed with that <laughs> they are just going to die they will not un or ing yeah and with that get this yorian back well, not back to our hand. You're in to our hand. And well, I think Ivan's pretty uh, stoked about that turn. Both those I would be. He deserves to be. Feels pretty good. So Christmas can get the turn back here. A land potentially to allow Yogmoth, if it even has one, would be nice, but there's not enough creatures on the board to do anything anymore. Uh, which is tough when when your namesake yeah. and strongest card of your deck isn't actually even that useful. Yeah, uh, that uh, would be kind of rough here. Pretty big problem. Here's a Grist. That's a good card. That can, you know, provide some advantage, stabilize the board a little bit. And it flips a Grist, so actually get an extra uh, shot at this, an extra loyalty. You don't see that happen every day. Pretty nifty. Unfortunately, I do not think that these 1-1 one, one insects are... Maybe going to be the most impressive against what Ivan is going to do on his next turn. You have no faith? I have some faith. Um, I just think that Ivan's last few turns have been very potent. Yeah. Yes, they have. <laughs> Completely devastating would be another way to put it. Now he's going to line up what Chris almost certainly does not want to see more than anything else is a replacement Omnath, I guess, after an abundant growth. Can Ivan play Omneth and Yogmoth? Yogmoth, oh my goodness, Omneth and Yorion in the same turn here. Uh, I we believe suspected so. that he had a bunch of fetch lands in hand, and if he does, this will pay off handsomely. moving some lands around deciding exactly what we're putting where looks like the land for turn is actually going to be a cavern of souls 
All right. But I think that we already have a wooded foothills in play, if I'm not mistaken, about the land under the triome. Cool. Okay. Well, that works too. And this is going to allow the Yorion to pick up five cards. Uh, if my count is correct, two Abundant Growths, Oath of Nyssa, Omnath, and Icefang Quaddle. That's a lot. That is more than double the size of Chris Smith's hand. And I was just yeah. going to pick it up for free. Nope. Yep. Unholy. Uh, so I was not going to worry about Yomnath or Yorion right now. Uh, okay. He's got well, more man. He's got plenty. He's going to do everything. <laughs> he can do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Use the one mana from Omnath for the red Unholy Heat. And then the remaining three plus the two. Get this little snake bird into play. Serpent bird. Excuse me. It's not a snake. All right, so Ivan will rotate one Abundant Growth onto the cavern so it can tap for colored mana, and he will draw five. I believe he'll discard one to hand size. Okay, draw five. He's drawing four and then anticipating for a for the Oath of Nyssa. Oh, yeah, this is um, potentially a little bit of just insult to injury, it feels like. Because what? Chris, Chris's most ideal draw... Is what a damnation? <laughs> Good luck with. I mean, sure. Hey, Chris already has one game loss, so. Oh, me hook massacre would be good, except for that we what? actually can't cast it for a lot, so it yeah, wouldn't be for good. one, that's not going to do us anything. We yeah, we need to we need to land in a that's damnation. What you get for listening to the director. I know. He's just to setting fair, you up. Most of the fun facts that our director has given us have been pretty good. Well, that one that one certainly lacked. All right, Chris Smith still trying to win this game. Still trying to move on to the top four here. Torok. All right, I like Torok. I respect Torok. Locker for Rob. <laughs> yeah. And uh, got some cards out of Ivan Sand, even though I think Ivan is saying whatever. Yeah. What cards out of Ivan's hand? That wasn't even a kick to Rock. Oh, that's fair. So, uh, yeah, we're just a 2-1 blocker for Omnath. Cool. Yeah. So we're kind of winding our way towards a conclusion here. Uh, well, I think we were of... concluded uh, probably mm, definitely last turn, leaning that way about two turns ago. Well, still, we're going through the motions here. As Ivan... Seems very likely, barring I don't even know what sort of top decks from Chris Smith to advance through. There is Renin 6 to take down the Turok Prismatic Ending to take down Endurance, opening the way for attacks. Uh, Chris Smith at 10, both players at 18 actually. <clears throat> but Ivan can come across for half of Chris's life total right here. Unless an insect decides to block. All right, this is the last quarterfinal running. So once this match concludes, we'll take a short break. And it's going to conclude right now. Okay, there it is. Ivan Espinosa defeats Chris Smith and advances to the semifinals of the NRG Modern 5K. We have got two elimination rounds left to go. Becky and I will be with you all the way through. Uh, please stick with us. We'll be back with updated bracket and then semifinal action right here.